Hello. Hello. And welcome to Finish Big in yes. the bleak midwinter long ago. Yeah, you've guessed it. We are doing an instant reaction to the next well, what is it actually? The Audacity series? Oh, you see that person in between us there. Midwinter. <laughs> so we're recording this the in the bleak series. midwinter itself. Featuring redacted. Because you have to listen to the last set to know. Yeah, so. Even though they have released a cover now. There will be spoilers in this. There will be spoilers. And we are at the train station and it hasn't come out yet. It's coming out tomorrow and we're going to listen to it instantly and give our. So reaction. excited. So Jake Griffiths, so excited. Paul we're McGann. recording this already. Redacted. Yes. I can't say her name. <laughs> yeah. I'm literally spoiler free. But we love the last set, so. Yes. Do you know, the last time we heard in the bleak midwinter, something tragic happened. It's when Lucy Miller left, isn't it? Mmm, yeah. So, are we going to have tragedy for audacity and redacted? Let's find out. Well, we've just got back and we are ready to listen to in the, the bleak, bleak midwinter. midwinter. We've got a hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, marshmallows. Are you it's ready to jingle your bell? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have listened to all three now uh, a couple of days ago, so we've had a bit of time to marinate our thoughts. Marinate? Marinate? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, so let's take them one by one. I've listened to two of them twice, you know. I could tell you something about these stories. So first in the set is 24 Doors by John Dorney. Mm. What do you think of that one then? I, I, unusually, I think this is the weakest of the three, while still being rather good. I think it's a good story. I think it's a good idea uh, to have this man who, but effectively, the Doctor, Charlie and Audacity. I'm going to have to say it, Charlie, now. Yes. Yeah. The cover's out. Um, they come into his life and they basically have a profound impact on his life, don't they? That's a good story to tell. It's quite, it's not like a big epic story. It's a slight story. It's more the way the story it's is told. It's told. Yeah, this is the, it's the of gimmick of that, which is yeah. the thing. So 24 Doors being obviously the advent, Doors of the advent. So it's sort of, it's just little sort of, almost sort of vignettes. Vignettes? Vignettes. 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 Uh, <laughs> telling the story and each one is like a door. So... Mm. Door one and then the scene, you know door what? two it and made then the scene. So, it made yeah. me realise you know, how beautiful the voices are mm. of the three regulars now, Paul McGann, mm. Jake Griffiths and India Fisher. Because mm. you've got Paul McGann going, you know, December 5th in its very seductive way. Yeah. You've got Jake Griffiths going, you know, December 28th in her very emergency <laughs> yeah. voice. Well, that and doesn't go got... up to 28th. Oh yeah, shit. <laughs> and then you've got India Fisher in full master chef mode going, you know, how does she sound like? Door number two. That's not bad, actually. <laughs> but, so it's less about the actual story for me on this one. It's more yeah. seeing our new three regulars, the yes. Doctor, Audacity and Charlie, oh, yes. yeah, spending yeah, yeah. time together at Christmas. Fantastic. The interactions between Audacity and Charlie are brilliant. This is our hot new team, isn't it? It is. And, um, like, I just want to hear more of them all the time. The idea it's of brilliant. bringing in a new character, making you think that new character is just going to be her and the Doctor before, sort of pre-Charlie, I guess I thought they were. And then to realise, no, it's set in the middle of Charlie's run. So then to bring in a third character, may we mention Carice, it don't always work, does it? But they've slapped Jay Grissis mm. and uh, India Fisher together. And the chemistry is out of this world. Yeah. And I don't know if you heard in the special features, they're having a wonderful time mm. making these. And you can hear it. And they're both historical companions as well, but from slightly yeah. different times. There was and a great so line, they... wasn't there, about, about, she goes, well, you're, you're, this is our future for both of us, but you're a bit further, so mm. maybe you can help me guide. And Charlie goes, no, 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 we'll guide each other. Mm. There's no sort of jealousy. No. There's no tension. And they really complement yeah. each other. So that's the big takeaway from that first one. Less about, I mean, the story, and even like the ending of the story, the Doctor's like, I don't really know what yeah. happened. <laughs> Oh well, it was, it's more just a vehicle. Who knows what that was all about? All it is know? is for the regular characters and a, and a gimmicky vehicle to tell a story. But, a but it's still great. It's for not Jason terrible. Watkins, who is one of my absolute favourite actors. I didn't know um, that was him. Oh, he's fantastic in this. He's really, really good. And I really did like as well the fact that it is a bit of a redemption story because the fellas, uh, uh, he's got... Uh, 
he's a drunk, isn't he? He likes mm. a bit of alcohol. He's a sort of down and out fake Santa mm. and all of this. And bring it the basically meeting the Doctor Charlie and Olasty. Events conspire that means somebody could die, and that doesn't happen mm. at the end of the story. And then as a result, he's going to go on to have a better life. So it is a redemption. It redemption is, but story. it's. it's... It's a little. It, no, no, I don't really it's, it's care unusual, about what happens. It is unusual for John Dorney yeah. for, to not be the standout of the yeah, set. Yeah. But the other two are so strong. Mm. I think they're that's all why great, this though. Is, they're all great. It's very yeah. listenable. This. So next yeah. up, The Empty Man mm. by mm. Tim Foley. Oh, we are Foley Files. We are absolute Foley. We Foley Files. Are... Foley Files oh, now no. because anything with him Would on you now. Foley Tim, if you can have oh, a chance. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my. God. So have you seen this him? was it's very handsome. It's very <laughs> so handsome. this was actually my favourite of the set. Oh, why? Well, I, I thought as well we're going into sort of a ghost Christmassy story, and we sort of did, but it didn't go where I was expecting it to. I was always like, okay, what's going to happen? Next? Like, I I didn't had no idea where it was going to go, and it didn't go exactly how I thought it was going to. Um, and it's a very small contained mm. story a again in a way you've got our three regulars and really just one other guest character yeah and you're not really sure about him at first or what's going on and we're sort of brought in halfway through the story and then we go back and find out what's been going on so it's all a bit it, we do like, un we unpeel his characters we go along yeah. as well as he has all these dialogue exchanges with the three so regulars. it was really in interested going right through there was never a moment where i was like oh this is getting a bit slow or yeah. there was always something there was always it's like a, a mystery and i think that's the is that the idea because they talk about the, the ghost christmas ghost story i love it you know ghost so story. It, but it's done, way back it's to obviously done Midnight, in a doctor who right? way but this is very different this is Charles very Midnight. very different but i quite like that smaller contained character thing it was a bit the, like the, the fifth doctor one that we did you know with the just the regular, you know, in the that's night jar. In the yeah. night jar. That's Tim Foley yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's all, Tim I like Foley, those more. You sort get of... those regulars perfect. Yeah. And again, the three oh, of them. The three are of them. Great brilliant. Audacity has the best lines. Yeah. Oh, she's and she great, is a she? bit like. I've heard someone say that she sounds a bit mannered because she doesn't. She doesn't yeah, contract she like is. Leela. But that's no, no, she, she's a she's but, a miss from the Regency yeah. time. Of course, she doesn't she contract does her have, words. She's got elements of Leela. She carries herself with the portment. You know. Yeah. Got bits of of Leela there yeah. in terms of taking things quite literally yes. and, th and things but like that. But she's got the intelligence well, isn't she? and the humour of more of like Charlie. Like she goes to Charlie. Yeah. What an absurd premise that it could be Christmas every day. Mm. And I don't think this wizard is very wise. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so great. So this second one, mm. you heard that one twice as well. Yes. Um, I really enjoyed that it's one. It's Nicholas Grace in this from Bang Bang A Boom. Mm -hmm. I wondered if that's why you liked it, you know. Um, no, no, it's a it's a very intimate... I'm glad there's a ghost story in here. This is the most atmospheric of the three. Yeah. It's got Absolutely all the cool. spooky happenings coming, mm -hmm. coming in. And Charlie Pollard... Um, coming through the halls of the TARDIS in a, in a dress floating through. I was like... And the chance to explore the TARDIS with... Mm -hmm. Charlie and Audacity as well mm. was really, really great. Mm. Like, again, I don't think this isn't the best story that Big Finish has ever brought out, no. but it is an atmospheric ghost story with three brilliant regulars. I can't I stress love this it one. Enough. This is my favourite. This is my favourite. Ah, well, do you know what my favourite was? Winter of the Demon. Winter of the Demon by Roy, Roy Gill. Gill. He, I'll tell you what, right? I don't think there are enough people talk about Roy are we, Gill. Um, Gillows? Gilles. We are Gillophiles, Gillophiles as well. Yes, as well. And have you seen him? He's super handsome. <laughs> oh God, I'd Roy is Gil any day. So he wrote that Ninth Doctor one with the uh, Legion and the Cybermen and yeah, the Brigadier. Yeah, the Bowie Yeah, oh, we, it, so it reminded me a little bit of that I, before I even realised that it, he'd written it. I was like, okay, I know we're in sort of Edinburgh again. There's a a female sort of but it means investigator, you get lots of local investigator. Actually, no. And there's the history of this area and all of that. And I was thinking, this sounds very familiar. But it goes in a completely different direction. Does great things with the regulars again. Charlie gets a bit no. of a love interest. This was their and best. And a bit of a snob. Of the three, this no, was their I best. I don't know. Because it splits up the three regulars and it gives them all another we character to interact with. Mm. And you've got those scenes happening one after another. And they have to be charming and ingratiate themselves and investigate. And all three of them, are, Paul McGann was was, was mm. with the, the woman, I can't remember her name now. Mm. And he's asking all the right questions. Audacity is um, putting somebody on the spot and being like very firm with them. And Charlie is being 
charming as hell, as charming as Charlie's mm. ever been, in a bit of a romance. She gets a bit of a snog at the end as well, mm. which you were appalled by, yeah, weren't you? I just said that before, but never mind. I wasn't listening, sorry. <laughs> I'm never listening. Um, I, and, but this is the one that feels most like a Doctor Who story. Yeah. We're leading up to a huge climax. These horrible demon creatures are going to come down and burn the earth. There's going to be a huge explosion that destroys the entire... And it's all built into this big climax. I thought the pacing of this was superb and it really gathers momentum in the second half. Mm. Yeah, no, I didn't enjoy it as much as the other ones, but... You're mad. Um, but I, th this set overall is absolutely brilliant. Do you know, like, if I was going to rate them, I'd yeah. say seven, eight, nine. Mm. So that's sort of getting better as mm. it goes along. Mm. Terrific production value as well, I thought, in but this. But it's a great box set. I mean, Christmas themed. No, like, returning elements again, no which we always... No continuity. No continuity. It's, no it's fresh. It's looking forward. <laughs> oh it's got its brilliant new character in Audacity. That's what we. That's why we really like these box sets, because they're doing something... Like, they're just do, doing something different. And it doesn't have to be a massive epic. They can be smaller, yeah. contained, one-off stories... Three one-off stories, no like two parters or anything like that. This is essentially what we asked for. Which wasn't is it? what this is the kind of big thing that we really, really like. Focus on character, yeah. Give us regulars that we so like. So going ahead, I'd love to see more of the these three I think next... in similar kind of box sets. I don't think we need big six parters or epic things like that. You know, we just want a one-off, nice and for Christmas time, Christmas themed. You know, your one-off Christmas ghost yeah. story. This is perfect. So these are ones that you're going to want to go and listen to again and again. Because you don't have to, ha you don't have to have tons of previous continuity, or it's not going to tie into like tons of other box sets or anything. It's just a one-off, simple story. There's real, a uh, real confidence. This set mm. that the first set worked, and that they're just running. You know, mm. like sometimes with a big finish, you can tell they're sort of hobbling it all together. You know, once the future things like that. There's a real confidence that no, no, we know this is good. Mm. I think next they do need to do something a bit more epic because you've had the first Audacity story, which was a small character tale. You had the Cyber War one. Now you've had three small, sort of technically mm. small character tales. I think they do need to do something big now. Well, we and I hope they see... do. Can I... we please have five Audacity sets next year? Well, we need year, to see please? what happens with Audacity because I think that thing in the first book set needs to come back. Ditch the time war. We don't need point. that anymore, do we? But I mean, you need to finish her story. Yeah. But I mean, don't we can have plenty her. of one-off adventures along the way. We don't want to do like what we did with Bliss when old Racky Fakra mm. went off and got a load of work. And so we couldn't finish her story. That was very sad. And uh, just another quick note for Jay Griffiths, who has come oh. into an established set of regulars, a very popular, and holds her own, and has developed a great relationship with both Paul McGann and India Fisher, both on and off mic. Mm. She's Brilliant. She's terrific. I, oh, she was wasted before in Doctor Who. Pretty so. much, I would listen to anything with these mm. characters now. It would be an easy sell yeah. for me for these. Yeah. Well, I suppose we should say Merry Christmas. Merry to... Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, and so that was everyone. another quick instant reaction. So looking forward to the next Paul McGann box set whenever that come out, comes out. And may I say, ho, ho, big finish ho. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, of course. <laughs> Especially Luke Malloy is the biggest hoe of all. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to finish instant instantly and big. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs>